Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Cuphead, the fast rolling dice game by the OP. It plays one to four players, takes roughly about 20 minutes per level that you wish to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Cuphead, the fast rolling dice game, you are going to be playing the game in stages. There are multiple different types of bosses, and in each boss there's multiple phases. You're going to gather your wallop deck that you'll be utilizing to gain new cards and new abilities, your own player board, and that player board will come with its own unique dice and then you're going to choose the boss you're going to fight. That boss is going to be in a box and in that box will be multiple phases of cards. You'll be fighting the phase in the first phase for the boss, second phase, third phase, and then hopefully defeat the boss by rolling dice as fast as you can. Think of the game Escape in which you're trying to roll dice, roll dice to get the exact number of dice in the locations that you need for each of the cards presented on the board. After you do so, if you've successfully accomplished your goal, which is defeating the boss by getting the required symbols on your die, along with damaged die, you're going to then be marking off its HP, hitting it to zero. And of course, if you can beat that boss, you'll move on in a campaign style game that you're going to improve and upgrade your character as the game goes on. And that's the basic idea of the game. Roll your dice, get the dice and symbols that you need to defeat the boss's phases, and successfully defeat the boss, gathering new upgrades and moving on to boss two, three, four, all the way to eight. Tons of unique little twists and replayability. Let's take a look at how to play the game and of course how to set it up and my review. To set up the game Cuphead, a fast rolling dice game, simply go ahead and take the main board and place it in the middle of the table within reach of all players. Take the wallop deck, shuffle it, and place it underneath the board where all players can reach it. Choose the boss you'll be facing. And if this is your first time playing the game, select boss number one or box bo boss box number one and Open it up and gather the cards you need for phase one and put it to the left of the board where the draw pile is. Give every single player a player board, the dice they need based on their color, and of course the black die with their color as well. They're going to also receive a certain amount of HP, which is three, take those tokens and place them on the board. And of course, they're going to also get all of the tokens and put them in their distinct areas, whether it be coins for more, replay, more um, resources that you'll be gathering and upgrades, or whether it be these wonderful parry tokens, which can revive your teammates, additional HP tokens for when you gather charms, and of course, time tokens, where if you take too long to defeat a boss, you're going to lose points at the end of the phases after the boss has been defeated, provided you can defeat the boss. Additionally, there's also an HP bracket for the boss that you bring out, which is going to have a certain amount of HP based on the number of players. Set that to the boss's health, and uh, set aside all of the rest of the boxes of the bosses, as well as all the extra little achievement, victory, total, uh, holders that you can open up if you successfully do any of the things they say. Like, you can open this envelope if all players complete a battle with three parry tokens each. But you won't need that for now, so you can go ahead and remove them, along with, of course, the save sheet, which you will be able to utilize after you beat a boss or beat a certain phase. This is kind of a way to save your progress to move on later by tracking your score based on the boss that you defeat. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and set the game up, and of course I have my phase one for the root pack, the first boss in the game. If you're playing a one player game, he's going to have six HP. If you're playing a three player, it's 10. And of course a four player, it's 12. Uh, basically, it's, you're gonna change it based on that mode. And then we're gonna go ahead and play a one player game. So I will move this HP token down to six. And then I'm going to set it aside to remind myself that that is how many uh, HP points the boss has. You will take this deck here, this root pack deck for phase one, you'll shuffle it up, and then you're gonna place it on the draw pile here. Then you're going to go ahead and flip over three cards, one, two, and three. Three. These cards are going to have symbols on them, and these symbols need to be met based on the location of your board. So when rolling dice, if there's a hand symbol on the first of the cards, you're going to need to have a hand symbol in the first area of your board. Just like that. And if you can do that, you're going to be able to stop that card. You'll gain any bonuses that you can get from that card, like for instance in phase one, this parry uh, symbol here is going to net you a uh, gain, gain one parry, and you'll be taking that and putting it on your board. And there's a limited number of parries that you can have in the game. Additionally, you'll go on to the next one here, which is double feet. And if you get double feet in the next area, that is going to also make you uh, stop the boss from doing damage to you. And then finally, a singular jump foot. And if you can get all three of those in each of the three different areas, you are then going to net 
the boss not doing any damage to you. But how do you actually win is the question. Well, whenever you have a pointer die, you can place it in addition to the die that you need in a certain area, and that will do an additional one damage. In addition to that, there's also a nice EX bonus die, where if you have a pointer symbol on that die and you place it in a space that is available for one of the cards uh, that does not need an extra symbol, you can do damage to that boss based on your EX ability. And in this case, it's just two as opposed to one. So something like a board like this is going to do three damage plus one for it being an EX die, which is a total of four damage. And how do you roll the dice? Well, basically what's gonna happen is there's an app on your phone. You can download this Cuphead app and you can decide how many seconds you wanna play, whether it be 10, 15, or 20 seconds. I recommend 20, this game is very challenging. Then you push the button, start, and then you start by rolling these dice. And you'll roll, and you'll roll, and roll as fast as you can. The rules for rolling are very simple. You roll the dice, keep any you don't want, or any you want, and any you don't want, you can re-roll as fast as you want, as many times as you'd like. But when the timer runs out, so does your rolling. You may no longer be able to roll. And additionally, when you place down dice, you have to place them down in the areas they need to go in from left to right. So once you've placed a die in the first space, if you ever move on to go to the second area or the third area, you cannot go back. So for instance, if I have a hand, and I need it for the first area, and then I also happen to have a double foot, I can place that in the next area, but if I do, I cannot go back to the first area and place a pointer finger to do a damage to the boss uh, after already moving past that space. In each of the spaces, there's two little areas in which you can place dice. Sometimes you'll need to place two dice in order to stop the boss card, and other times just one. And if the spaces are filled, you obviously will not be able to do damage to the boss in that way. So you're going to have to take into consideration when there is only one symbol that will allow you then to do damage to a boss because you can imply or add an additional pointer finger to that area. Then, of course, uh, you'll keep rolling and rolling until the timer or the buzzer runs out. When the buzzer runs out, you'll tally up your score and or your damage that you deal. And you'll check, did I stop this card? Yes. Great, did I do a damage? Yes, do a damage. Go on to the next space. Did I stop the card? Yes. Did I do a damage? Yes, do a damage. If you fail to stop a card, you will take one damage. And if you do not do a damage on a space by having a pointer finger die in that area, you cannot do a damage to the boss. There's also wallet cards that you'll draw as you defeat certain cards in the boss's phase deck, which will give you unique little benefits like giving players additional HP, giving players the ability to utilize tokens or dice, and other wonderful things that will help you out through the game. The round is over when the boss's HP reaches zero, or I should say the phase, in which, in which you'll move on to the next phase of the game. You will take out the deck of cards from the original boss, and you'll check to see, okay, this is the stop, don't go any further, take the first phase out, go on to the next phase with a new portion of the boss. This is the root back phase two. And of course, it'll tell you how many cards you're going to include uh, based on literally the next specific number of cards, which in this case is the next nine cards. And that will be your next phase deck of cards that you'll be utilizing. In which case, you'll then once again bring out three and you will fight the boss again. Now, of course, if you do not beat a boss, if the boss is still alive at the end of 20 seconds and checking to see how much damage you've done, what will happen is you'll take all the cards in the area and you'll put it into the discard pile. And then you're going to go ahead and flip over three new cards and once again begin the phase. If the deck runs out before you defeat the boss, you're going to get a time token, which is basically just going to give you negative points towards your overall score at the end of the boss fight. And the more time tokens you have, the less well you did. Thusly, you might get a C or a D rank if you're not careful because you're not able to defeat the boss fast enough, but you've protected yourself long enough to stay alive. When you take damage and you removed all three of your HP tokens, you are going to be whammoed. Basically, that means as you're out of the game, but not only that, everyone loses. How can you prevent that? Well, there are some wallet cards in the game that will give other players HP, and you can utilize those cards to help other players. As well as, if another player were to have a parry token, they can spend that parry token to keep you alive for the next round by giving you one HP to start the round off with. And thusly, you can continue in the game. But if any player is whammoed and nobody has a parry to prevent that player from being 
basically out of the game, and thusly everyone losing the game, then everybody loses and that is the end, and you have to start the boss again. If you beat defeat the boss, like I said, you go through all the different phases, what's going to happen is there's a unique buying phase, in which case you're going to take out all the different unique little shop cards, like charms, as well as weapons, and you'll be able to purchase them based on the coins that you get, based on how many coins you get for defeating a boss. And you'll put those cards in certain areas on your player board, whether it be a new weapon like the spreader, you'll place that on top of your area, and thusly now your EX does a different ability as opposed to the two damage, or a charm that might give you additional health to start the next round off with, and of course other unique weaponry that will help you throughout the game as you fight new and more difficult bosses as you progress through it. The first boss is obviously the easiest boss, but don't get me wrong, it's still challenging, but that's basically how you play the game. Flip three cards, roll dice, check each of your areas to see how much damage you do and if you prevent the cards from doing damage to you. Did you defeat the boss? No? Move on to the next three cards, rinse and repeat until you do or somebody is out of the game. If you do, move on to the next phase, go through all the phases, buy stuff at the shop, and then take up the next deck of cards, the next boss that you want to be fighting, and you can go ahead and progressively play until you have had your fill or basically one of you has been destroyed or whammoed out of the game. And that is the game Cuphead, the fast rolling dice game. Much like the original IP, which comes from a video game called Cuphead, this game is challenging. And don't get me wrong, that game is exceptionally challenging. For those of you who like a side-scrolling shooter game, similar to like Mega Man, you are going to dig Cuphead. It pre presents a ton of different bosses, a lot of fights, styles, you have to kind of track how you want to do certain things and where you do certain things. And uh, there's flying machines, it's very like reminiscent of like 80s style cartoons, but with a unique little twist of the bosses well, on a rock'em sock'em. I don't know, it's, it's a really, really cool game. Most people have heard of the game Cuphead, and if of course you're on this video, most likely it's because you know the video game and you want to see if the board game is any good. And what I can tell you about this game is A, it's very, very challenging. B, you're going to be rolling a lot of dice very quickly throughout the game. And some people are going to be better than others because you're going to be taking the dice and utilizing different styles of rolling in order to manipulate the dice to get what you need. You can set them aside, you don't have to re-roll all the dice, but how you choose to save what and when you choose to place makes a huge difference in this game. Sometimes you might just get totally unlucky lucky and get none of the cards and take three damage instantly and need a parry to save you. And other times you might just defeat all the cards and do a ton of different damage. Uh, and, and that's a lot of fun in this game. If you like a fast paced game that's challenging and you're not really sure what's gonna pop up next in each of the different cards, the different phases, and when you can buy certain things, it's all going to come together. The game is really easy to understand. Once you understand the rules of this game, you can go straight through it no problem and it'll fly by. Quite literally because it's supposed to be that way and because you understand it well enough to where you'll understand what you need to do. A couple of things with this game though. A, don't understand how all the charms work. There's nothing in the rules that explains them other than that you buy them and you can place the charms next to you and the EX attacks change your original EX attack. And uh, they say certain things on them, like you gain four health for the next round, but you can never go back up to four. It's always up to three. It doesn't say after each boss if you regenerate all of your HP or not. Um, those kind of things. There's a bunch of like little things that I wish they had more detail in the rule book to explaining what they do. I would love a card in each of the boxes that explains how each of the different, uh, the specific different like charms work and uh, when you want to use them and how you want to use them. Uh, some of the boss decks do have cards that explain what the bosses uh, want you to, like what they want you to do, what unique twists they have in the game. Uh, each of the bosses start adding new different types of die sides that you need in order to place them on there. Uh, some of the bosses have unique symbols that are actually not on your dice and they're affiliated with a certain side of your die so it kind of trips you up in that way which works for me very well. And the speed and the style of the game is great. This game does have a huge reminiscence of Cuphead. They did an excellent job portraying that game in board game form. It's fast, it's hard, you're relying on the people to help you succeed in the game. You kind of work on your own for your own potential, particular success, just like in the game. If you, you know, if you die and your partner is still around, uh, then you're out, right? But if uh, you do very well and your partner does very well, you do a ton of damage. Or maybe I just do well enough to not do damage and they do enough damage, that can work out just fine as well. You, but you don't want to just 
stay alive. Staying alive is not going to help because the deck will run out, time runs out, you start getting these tokens and you get less and less victory points at the end of the game utilizing the scoreboard and you're always trying to push yourself past the limit. It also has a reminiscence of a five minute dungeon in which you're throwing cards but in this case you're throwing dice. It's very quick and you have to match each of the different symbols in order to successfully defeat those cards. Just like in five minute dungeon a boss will come out, symbols are required and you have to throw down cards that match those symbols. Same type of style. The artwork in this game is excellent. Very, 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 very close to the game. Cuphead in every way. They did a great job of the player boards, excellent quality, and the design is great. The fact that they have different bosses, how the bosses come out of the boxes and have each of their own unique phases, and then a shop at the end, brilliant functions, and of course works to the IP in a beautiful way. And you can play up to eight bosses, and they do definitely get more and more challenging. And if you like a challenge in a game that involves dice rolling, then this is going to be for you. Last little things is this game is a dice roll and because of that if you do not like rolling dice or maybe you're not a really fast die roller or you can't like notice the symbols or if in some cases you have to say okay the hand is actually a boat and uh, the star is actually going to be a wild now or, or maybe the cuphead symbol is now actually going to be a, a ship going forward or ship going upward and having to kind of like track that all in your brain if that's not something you really enjoy then you won't like this game. It's kind of like Yahtzee but if Yahtzee was on steroids and forced you to have to think really quick on your feet. I could never see playing this game in 10 seconds. I would only suggest playing this at the 20 second level so you can get past the first boss. But if you really, really want a challenge and you're up for it, maybe there's some like tactics that you can use that I don't know about. But my main thing I would say suggest to you is using two hands, separating the dice with one hand as to where you want to save them and when you want to place them and using the other hand to roll. And so you can be like, okay, this, okay, I'm gonna keep these two, I'll put these two over here and then, okay, and I roll again. And that's the way I would suggest doing the game because you want to be really, really fast at die rolling. If you're slow, I know a lot of people I've seen play the game, they, they roll the dice and they pick a few and then they put one down and they roll again. Too slow for this game. You need to be really, really quick on your feet. But yes, the OP does an excellent job in bringing back Cuphead. The one thing, please give me something on BGG, a piece of paper that explains how all the abilities work so I understand. I know what a round is, I know what a phase is, and I know what a boss is, but I don't understand if I need to put all my HP back at the end of every boss phase. Do I get my HP back? If not, the HP charm is very, very useful. And if I already have three HP and it just gives me plus one, but only for one round, I would rather take the other item that lets me have a wild every turn. But I don't know if that's the case or not. And there's other items that are in the game that don't make a whole lot of sense either. And I just wish they had that, that specific little sheet. And I'm sure somebody will make one after seeing this video or eventually down the line because it is a fairly new game and it's a lot of fun. I'm keeping this game. I'm going to wait to play it again until I know what the cards do though because it was a really sad thing to have people playing the game and they asked me a question after I went through all the rules and I couldn't tell them and not only could I, could I tell them because I didn't know which can happen like I just don't understand the rules but they weren't there and they weren't online either so please please do that for me because I love Cuphead the IP. I have played the game. I beat the devil. Did a really good job. Well, I, I, I beat it. I didn't do it. I, I, did a, I did a bad job. I got like really bad scores, but I still beat it. And that's saying a lot for, for playing that game. If you've played Cuphead, you know it's very challenging. And this, well done. Whoever designed this game, they did a great job in, in recreating that feeling for me, but with being able to play with up to four players. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Cuphead, the fast rolling dice game. If you want to take a look at it, there's a link down below in the description where you can pick up the game at the OP. They make a ton of cool games and a lot of them based on IP. IPs. Next game I'll show you will probably be the Kingdom Hearts Talisman Edition, which is going to be a little different than the original Talisman, I hope, a little faster, because that's the only problem I had with that previous game. So fingers crossed, it's a little quicker, because that's really, really what I wanted to see as a faster version of Talisman. And of course, check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Click the link in the description to see all the rest of the games here, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button as well, so you can see more videos we produce every week. Week, Monday through Friday and Sundays we do our live stream at 6 30 p.m. PST. So we're constantly making new content for you. If there's a game you want to see, put it down below in the comments as well. Is this game something you want to pick up? Why or why not? Let me know. And if I goofed on not knowing the charms and they're actually somewhere in the rule book or in the boxes and I just couldn't figure it out with me and my wife, let me know. It does happen on the occasion and I feel really bad whenever I goof up on thinking I know that something isn't there and then it is there. 
because I would really, really like to know more information on a lot of these cards. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to fast rolling some dice with you next time.